Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. Alright, it's day three of my four day weekend. I'm going to finish up the painting today. As you recall from the last video, I have a couple places where I need to do one more coat and uh, I gotta do one, I gotta do two whole coats along the uh, bottom near the baseboard. So we're gonna finish that off. Then I'm gonna put the uh, the face plates back on the electrical receptacles and light switches. And I actually wanted to do something to deal with a little pet peeve of mine on one of the light switches. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. After that, we're gonna get going and start hanging up some of my Gotta by Voices posters so that we can start cleaning out the guest bedroom. So let's get going with this. So this here is a little bit of a surprising development. All of her life, Nibble is, when she's gone into her uh, day, day lounging mode. She'll usually find the highest, most inaccessible sh shelf in the house, and that's where she hangs out most of the time. She did that at the apartment, uh, and she also did that back at the house in California. Well, for the first few days, the most inaccessible part of the shelf was over here, and that was generally where she and Bite would hang out. I have never, ever seen either of the cats use this a lot. Bite used it occasionally in the house in California. It's been in storage since it arrived here in Texas, but I have never ever seen Nibble use this because this is not exactly the most secure place to be. Once One thing, she's trapped in there, and two, she's not that high off the ground. She could be a lot higher off the ground if she was really, really uh, desirous to do that. So I kind of feel good that uh, she's feeling comfortable enough to be down here and use this because that kind of tells me that I think she's getting a little bit more used to this place. And of course, of course Bite is hanging out right there. He likes to sleep up on this thing here because he can stare out the window and he likes that. All right, painting's done now for the most part. I might end up having a little touch up uh, here and there as we go along. Sometimes when you're like doing things in here, you'll notice, oh, I missed a little spot. We can hit that. But for the most part, everything is good. Uh, all the, I've got two coats of paint on it, all the, the borders yet. I'm actually probably gonna leave the, the paper down on the ground for a while, because I'm not sure yet whether I'm gonna do something with the crown molding and with the, uh, the jams around the doors and the baseboards and stuff like that. I may do that a different color, but I'm gonna wait until I get all the posters hung up, I think, before I decide. I wanna see what it looks like, see if we need a little bit more accent uh, at some of the borders, but we'll play that by ear. And uh, I think next thing I am gonna do, however, is let's put the uh, uh, receptacle base plates and uh, light switch plates back on and get this place functional again. Oh, and while we're at this stage, um, I wanna do something about these, uh, about a couple of these light switches. This isn't really a mechanical problem or anything that's wrong. It's just an annoyance. And let me explain what the annoyance is. As you know, I've got this light here in the hallway. This light is controlled by this switch, but it's also controlled by one of the switches over here. It's also controlled by this switch here. Okay, so this is a special kind of switch that deals with that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, basically the two switches are connected together and, and when one switch flips, it, it flips the opposite for the other one so that you can turn the light on or off from either location. This is really handy when you have, you know, when you have a situation like this where you want to have, uh, you know, be able to, people, people to be able to turn on the light at the end of the hall there or turn it on when they come in from the garage. Uh, there's also a similar relationship between this light and this switch, because this switch turns off that light, but also this switch down here turns off that light. And here lies the problem. When you look at, and I'll show you how it's done right first. When you look at these two switches, the light is off, and this switch is in the down position, which is generally accepted to be kind of the off position on light switches. And this switch is in the off position or down position. This one, these two are right. But when they installed the other one, one of the switches got placed upside down. So this switch is, is in the down position. This switch back here is in the down position, but the light is on. 
And that's just that's because they installed one of the switches upside down. So what I think I'm going to do is take one of these off and just flip it. Just like I said, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just a pet peeve. I kind of like the idea that when the switches are in the down position, that means off. And uh, since that doesn't work between these two switches, uh, the solution is really simple. It's just take one of them and turn them upside down. That solves the problem. So I'm going to do that. So this is a fairly easy task. Basically what I did is I just removed this screw, this screw here, and those are the only two things that are holding the uh, light receptacle in there. Then I just sat there and rotated it 180 degrees and re-screwed it back into position. Now that, it's, uh, now that I got it set right, I intentionally got the other one on so I could have the light on in here. But this switch is in the down position now. And when I move this switch over here into the down position, the light goes off. So. That's how I wanted that. And like I said, it's a two minute fix. It wasn't really anything mechanically or electrically wrong or incorrect. It was just a pet peeve that kind of annoyed me and I've been meaning to do that for a while. So that's done. Let's put the light receptacle or let's put the light plates back on. Okay, room's completely back together. All the face plates are on the walls. I got the light switches set up correctly so that they're all down when they're in the off position. Got the smoke detector back up on the wall. Next thing I get to do now is start unpacking some of the posters that are in boxes in this room. So let's unload all that. All right, so I think I've unpacked all of the Guided by Voices posters. I know this doesn't look like much here, but there's a big stack of them here that I've got to put up. And I've already got them kind of lined uh, down the hall here. As you see, I can get a pretty massive collection. I'm not even sure if all of this is going to fit on the walls. I'll probably end up having some of it bleed into the uh, into the guest bedroom here. But uh, you know, I've got <laughs> it's still a mess in here, and I got a ways to go. But I can actually get everywhere in here now because see, all the posters were kind of back here. So I just kind of started digging my way back here, and uh, I think I got everything out of here now. So. Um, or at least everything got it by voices related. So we're gonna do, and I can actually see Nibble's been in here because this is her favorite toy. So she isn't usually allowed in here because you get her in here and you can't get her back out again. So we'll put this in here in her room where where it belongs and where she can find it. You know, Bites moved over here and uh, Nibble's still in her little uh, kitty hutch there. So there we go. Oh, and one more piece of good news. When I got into the back of the uh, back of the room, I, f I remember a couple weeks ago when I was unpacking the CDs, I said I was missing the CDs from Q on. Yeah, I just found them. So we can get all this hooked up again, too. That'll be nice to have the whole CD collection out. I am really pleased that the entire collection made it here and survived being stored in a storage locker for a year and got, got out mostly unscathed. I did have one poster that the frame was uh, damaged in uh, shipping or something like that. But fortunately, that's just uh, one of these cheap little frames you can buy at Walmart. It's a common size. I think this is an 18 by 24 poster. So I'm just going to run over to home, uh, home Depot. I always got Home Depot on the mind, right? I'm going to run over to Walmart and get a replacement po uh, poster frame for this. So I think I'm going to wrap this one up now. So come back tomorrow and watch me hang some of these. And until then, thank you as always for watching. And I'll see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.